Hello, everyone, and welcome to this latest installment of Adobe Live for Business. In this series, we aim to give our viewers a fortnightly dose of business inspiration by showcasing how notable brands and institutions are navigating the joys and challenges of business life. It's a format where we let some of Europe's most interesting business leaders across industries share their insights, stories, and examples of the work and projects they've been involved in. Now, in previous sessions, We've heard from such leading luminaries as Dara Fagan, the Group General Counsel for Rentical, Alison Davies, Chief Information Officer at the Natural History Museum, and from Simon Clifford, Director of Digital and Data at the Police ICT Company. They're all amazing sessions, amazing conversations, and I commend them all to you if you haven't already seen them. For today's session, I'm privileged to have with me none other than Mike Harlow, who, as many of you will know, is General Counsel, Deputy Chief Executive and Deputy Chief Land Registrar at HM Land Registry. Now, Mike has played a pivotal role in driving Land Registry's digital transformation since he took up the role in 2018, helping HMLR to get closer to its objective of becoming the world's leading land registry for speed, simplicity, and an open approach to data. Now, as if that wasn't already a big enough task, he's done it through the current pandemic crisis which has seen that sudden shift to remote working and multiple shifts in working practice that we're all getting familiar with. So without further ado, let's get going. Mike, welcome. Why don't we start by having you uh, introduce yourself for those who don't know you and describe a little the business of Land Registry. Thank you. Um, so I was um, uh, an engineer before I was a lawyer, um, which, uh, uh, is kind of relevant because I, I find technology uh, fascinating um, uh, and its application to how we can make legal processes like buying and selling a property work better uh, is, a, is a good mix for me. Um, uh, I converted to the law um, partly because most engineers that I were, was training with seemed to go and work abroad at that stage. Um, it was the time when manufacturing was, uh, was elsewhere in the world. Um, and I worked as a property lawyer, I was part of a law firm, and then, uh, then moved into the public sector and was at uh, English Heritage for a while before joining Land Registry. I joined Land Registry um, because I realised what a potentially influential role it could have, um, and it does have. We have uh, an estimated £7 trillion worth of property registered on the Land Register. That's more than half the wealth of the nation. When I say the nation, I mean England and Wales. We don't of Scotland, different jurisdiction, um, and one to one and a half trillion of debt secured on that property. That's a massive, um, it's, a, it's a massive responsibility because we guarantee uh, the, the title for all those properties. So it keeps me awake a little at night. Um, but it's also, if you can do something about the efficacy with which we can deal with land, when you're looking at such an important part of the economy, if you can just do a little bit, and I think we can do a lot, if we can do a little bit with something so vast in its scale, then you're making a very significant contribution. And I think it's, it's easy to think of it in financial terms, and you get that sense of scale from the financial terms. But of course, land is where all of life happens, even virtual businesses, even Adobe has, has you know, offices somewhere and data centers somewhere. So the way in which we use land dictates what our life looks like and also how sustainable it is. So, you know, land use planning is all about land use knowledge and, and well, knowledge about land. And, you know, there's, there's two kind of key areas in which I think the property market and the process of buying and selling can really develop. And that is information, understanding what land we've got, what it can be used for, and the speed and efficacy of processing. And what excited me about joining Land Registry was it has, a, it has a potential to positively influence both. There are very few property transactions that don't end up with Land Registry at some point in, their, uh, in the process. And therefore we, are, in my view, have a very strong responsibility to enable the property market um, to develop uh, in, in, in a positive way. 
Thank you very much. A really sort of impressive sweep and uh, sort of summary of the, the enormous scope, of obviously a lot at stake. Um, so we know, we hear a lot about how companies digitally transform, especially in the last 10 years, but the property sector is often considered to be a bit behind. I think you've alluded to that by saying how you want to sort of enable and support. So what's Landridge actually doing on the, on the digital front more specifically? Well, um, yeah, you're right. The, 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 the property market, and we, you know, we could spend quite a lot of time talking about why, but the property market is, uh, is relatively um, immature in its digital transformation in comparison to the share market, the, the financial markets. Um, and I think everyone knows that if you look at the prop tech industry, um, it, 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 it sort of starved of the oxygen that would enable it to, to grow like the fintech industry would grow. And, yeah. and I think, um, you know, what, what we see, and I think uh, this is kind of shared vision really, is the opportunity to improve the information that's available so that people can consume digital property data in a way uh, where you can layer it up and, and analyze the opportunity for, for investment, for development um, uh, across the country, and, but also the ability to um, then process the transactions in a much more um, uh, seamless way, in a much more digital way. So, you know, what and we have personal contributions to make to that, if you like, because some of that data is ours. Um, and, you know, our own register is not entirely digital. In fact, that's a bit of an understatement. So, you know, there's, there's work going on to make our register digital, machine readable, so that we can provide more live, real-time information and services. It's strictly, you know, in relation to that, to, to that mm. land register and, and, and enable land registration to be more real-time in that way. Um, and also, you know, we, we are going to make our services more real-time as well. We, we you know, believe that we can end-to-end uh, -end automate uh, the greater part of, of land registration processes at the moment. That's a part of it, but also, you know, because as I was saying, we are um, we're a monopoly. There's only one land register, <laughs> kind of naturally so. Um, yeah. Because people have to come to us, we we can set standards and influence the way the market develops. And we could do that negatively, as in we could, you know, do that just in, in a kind of selfish point of view and say, well, this works for us. Mm. Or we could do it in a collaborative way and say. Well, this works for us. What works for you, so that we could enable healthy um, development, digital processing in the marketplace. And so, um, you know, we call that kind of our market development strand of digital transformation. It's not so much about what we're doing behind our four walls, but about the way we interface with the market and how the way we do that enables the market to, to disrupt and develop in a healthy way. And the two things that we've done recently. Um, one today <laughs> um, uh, that really are, are, are a kind of flavour of that are uh, starting to accept electronic signatures and setting a standard for digital ID checking. And that, that standard for digital ID checking has, has, has just come out. There's a, a, a massive story there, of course. Um, I, I, I wonder, do you, can you sort of benchmark your efforts against other land registries in other countries? Is, is that an exercise that profitable or you know, worthwhile or are you yes. focused yeah. on, yeah. on the, the situation in the UK in particular? Um, well, of course, uh, every country would say that they're slightly different. Uh, their underlying property law is, is different. Um, the best comparators are um, the likes of Australia, New Zealand, Canada, um, where you know, the property, the, the, the substantive property law is very similar. Uh, and the land registry systems are very similar. It's not just a, a list of who owns it. It's also, a, you know, they're all, all, they're all state guaranteed registers. Um, and uh, it's interesting how in, you know, in, in New Zealand, for example, they, they went for automation um, many years ago, uh, and they're a very good benchmark for how much you can achieve um, nearer to real-time processing of that last part of the conveyancing process. Um, but there again, you know, they, they then paused and, um, you know, we're talking about digital ID checking and the use of electronic signatures in a way that they're now looking at us and going, okay, that's interesting. How can we pick that up? So we, we spend 
Um, we do talk to each other a lot. Um, we're not in competition. It's a great, <laughs> it's the great thing about land registries is, um, that you can share that know-how uh, and gain from each other. So yeah, there are great comparators around the world and we look to each other all the time not just for ideas, but also the confidence as to how they'll play out and work. Definitely. So you've alluded to a couple of things actually in your in your comments so far. Firstly, um, the huge scale of uh, land registry, the, the fact that you work with various partners and of course the, the very particular sort of legal framework and the implications of that legal framework, of course have to add to the challenge of your digital transformation. They're factors that not every organization has to wrestle with. Can you tell us a little bit more about those and um, particularly how, how that's led to your sort of latest announcement? Um, well, if you mean, you know, what, what, what are our sort of, sort of principal concerns as a land registry? And, uh, you know, we're, we're, not a, we're not a profit-making organisation, obviously. What we're here to do principally is create and maintain trust and confidence in the system. You know, that the point of the land registry is you don't have to worry about your ownership being secure. You don't have to worry about proving your ownership because it's on a list that government holds. And if that list happens to be wrong in any way, government compensates. So um, that is that is our first um, order concern. And so when we're looking at digital innovation, we're not we, are, we want it obviously to be secure and um, sorry, we want it to be slick and, and, and work as, as seamlessly as possible and for you to be able to do it on your phone, <laughs> on your way into work, if that, you know, uh, if you have a commute again, but um, you know, that's, that's absolutely ideal. But first and foremost, that has got to be healthy. It's got to be secure. So, um, you know, when we're looking at um, things like digital ID checking, we are looking for both those factors. First of all, we're looking, is it, as, is it a better way of identifying people? Are electronic signatures a more secure way of knowing who has signed and what they signed than the current way of doing things? Um, if so, then that ticks the first box of healthy. And then, right, how, how, how do you then achieve that in a way that also makes it efficient and, uh, and more convenient? Um, and fortunately, a lot of the technologies, not all variants of each of those technologies, but a lot of the technologies are point, you know, do give you both those things. Mm. Dig going digital, it's hubris to think that going digital doesn't increase, you know, introduce some risks. Mm. The question is, how do you balance those, uh, mitigate them or eliminate them with the way that you do things? Now, I, I think the, all the audience will be... Um particularly keen to know about your experience in 2020. Yeah. It must have been a hell of a year. Uh, we had several conversations, of course, and there was a lot of activity. So tell us um, a little bit about how COVID-19 accelerated your digital transformation program and how you worked with uh, stakeholders such as Adobe. Well, um, I think 2020 was a year when empathy became really easy um, because, uh, you know, we, we were um, five and a half thousand people working in 14 offices and, and uh, then we became five and a half thousand people working in five and a half thousand offices. Mm. Um, and overnight, we realised uh, what a problem it was just to keep our own business going. But of course, that immediately means you know how difficult it is for everybody. Um, and so, you know, when we got past the initial crunky, how do we actually... Uh, keep our you know, most important urgent services going so the property market never had to close, which you know, fortunately we were able to do. We then said, right, how do we, you know, once we've got that kind of in place, how do we now support our customers? Because they're in the same you know, distressed working conditions that we are. So everyone knew how difficult life had become and how you, know, you couldn't go to the post office, <laughs> get printing done, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it really shone a light. You know, the processes that, that and we could all see this, couldn't we? Uh, the processes that really thrived were those that are already digital. Mm. Um, and, and those that were uh, somewhat old fashioned, those are the ones that started creaking. So um, we wanted to hear, you know, what, what, was, what was and wasn't working for people in, in the property market, and you know what could we do immediately overnight? And there were some you know some instant fixes, uh, and then some things that took a little more thought 
but were um, hopefully, you know, super helpful for people in the way that they were working. And principally, people said, well, we can't do paper anymore and we can't meet people anymore. Mm. So what does what does that get in the way of? Well, it gets in the way of signing things and it gets in the way of witnessing things yeah. um, and, and, and getting, you know, checking uh, identity if I have to get someone to come into the office and bring their passport and, you know, see them, et cetera. So uh, that's where you know people say, well, let's let's find ways of using electronic signatures um, and and looking at digital ID checking. Um, and electronic signatures, you know, as, as you obviously know well, have been around for some time and have, and have been used in many sectors for some time. Um, but there's a slight difference with property in that property uses deeds, which have this which have this witness, whereas most sectors are just signing contracts where it's just the parties themselves yep. who sign. So the witnessing part of, of uh, signing a deed um, took some, you know, some investment of, of legal now to understand how we would achieve that electronically. Um, but then, you know, we've looked beyond that already. So we got all that sorted and got the sector you know, on board and say, well, how are we going to do this in practice? And, and that was an interesting marrying up of customers who knew what they what they wanted to avoid, which is paper, mm. and technology companies who knew they could provide something, um, but hadn't necessarily stepped into the world of conveyancing, which has some unusual <laughs> um, jargon. Um, so trying, sitting in the middle as land registry, going, well, we can see the opportunity of the technology over here and the customers over here, but they don't quite talk each other's language. Um, that was you know, a, a, an interesting exercise. And I think that's going to be an ongoing exercise. I think that's a kind of topic in itself, really, is how do we, as a sector, use increasingly, comp what's under the bonnet, increasingly complicated technology confidently when, you know, the property lawyers, the conveyances themselves, um, you know, they know what they want, but until they see something demonstrated, then, you know, they don't really understand what terms like qualified electronic signatures mm -hmm. mean. So that was quite something to try and bring together the complicated technology and the market, the potential consumers for that market and say, actually, this works for you. It doesn't, you, you may not realize that in first blush, but it does. Mm -hmm. um, but as I say, you know, we, so, you know, through the year we have set up this industry forum, you know, talked about you know, how, what they were personally experiencing and then worked really in a, Kind of admirably speedy collaborative way on bringing forward things that I think in another era probably would have taken twice three times as long to be honest. Um, I think if you yes if you look at the land registry blog for 2020 as I did in, in preparing for this conversation it really paints the picture of an organization that and, and indeed a sector that is sort of undergoing a really compressed, rapid period of change. How sort of successful do you feel that you've been so far in bringing the sector sort of along with you and uh, enabling them to do what they want to do? Um, and and how, much, how much of that sort of um, uh, future, or how much of that transformation is still to be done based on what you saw in 2020? Well, plenty. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think that maintaining the pace is going to be really interesting because um, I, I and, and I because I think we we've done a lot of that as a sector. I think we you know there's been a lot of well I'm you know I'm worried about this bit of it slightly but let's try it because it's clearly better than what we're currently doing. So you know learning through pilots, learning through development, and actually you know starting with something which we know is not perfect, which we know is only partial. But um, you know, expecting it to develop from there, as you know, as is true of our electronic signature standard, our digital ID standard, we have said it's not perfect. Mm. But you know, it, it's, it's it's a start, and let's develop it from there. So, I think it would be really interesting to see whether that um, way of working, that mindset, continues, or whether we, you know, generally see a kind of slowing down of the pace because people think, well, we've mm. got time. You know, let's let's get it just that little bit more right, which I think would be a pity. Obviously, you want to get things as as, as right as possible, but I think if you, it, uh, we don't need to barrel forward. It's not going to be crisis anymore. But I do think that 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 
that energy and that sense of focus was great. And there's mm. st- certainly plenty of mileage. There's mm. so much more to do. What do you think is the sort of the, the proper role and the, the, the right sort of mode of partnership for land registry with companies like, like Adobe, for instance, we obviously have a certain amount to contribute and yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I think this is where you, you um, uh, land registry can, can, uh, can almost sort of pay the, play the part of, of um, honest broker really, because um, what, what, uh, what we see uh, and with our industry forum and our, you know, our customer colleagues, what we see is the need for change, and, the, and and what we also see is the potential in the technology to help with that change. And and you know, the, the you've been you know very generous with your time over the over the last year um, in helping us understand what is the art of the possible in terms of the technology. Now, of course, um, it's always tempting to lead with the technology, <laughs> um, but you should lead with the problem. <laughs> so um, I, I think that, you know, uh, as long as we are maintain the mindset of leading with the problem, I think that um, what we can be, um, not the only people who do this, but certainly, you know, we have, we've got people in land registry who have spent a lot of time with you and, and, and other technologists who can understand um, what are the gains that could be made? What is the potential with current technology? You know, mm. practice technology, not not blue, you know blue sky stuff, but real mm. available stuff now. So, marrying those two up, I think, is something that we can certainly help with, um, and, and and that's super important. So it, it is about translating, as I say, those complicated technologies and into you know our knowledge of how the market actually works and how we can benefit from it. Yeah, I I couldn't agree more. I mean, we're uh, about to sort of publish an updated sort of how-to guide for the witnessed electronic signature process, and we'll surely follow up with something similar for use of qualified electronic signature, which is obviously something that we're sort of quite quite excited about and um, uh, certainly have a a lot to share. Listen, before we close, because I'm conscious that we're sort of getting towards time, I wanted to sort of invite just a more sort of personal reflection. You very modestly outlined your sort of career trajectory at the beginning. So let me sort of invite you, if you do look sort of more broadly at your career and your previous experience, what have you learned throughout that time that you would pass on to your audience to help them get through what's coming next? Yeah, see, the thing is I knew you were going to ask that question. And <laughs> I looked at it and thought, I'll just wait for inspiration because I'm not sure I've got anything, um, anything uh, that wise to add. I mean, one of the things that... Um, I'm going to I'm going to borrow somebody else's experience now. Um, I'm uh, a great fan of of Steve Jobs. Um, I think he was probably a nightmare to work with. But um, uh, one of the things that uh, there's, there's a, there's, um, people can YouTube it if they haven't already. Um, there was a video I think when he just rejoined Apple when he um, was criticised from the floor at one of his uh, launches by somebody. Um, and he, because uh, they were basically about to cancel some piece of software that this person on the floor really liked. And he said um, that uh, it's not about um, what technology can do because, you know, I think it was Open Docs. He said, Open Docs probably can do things I'm not even aware of. And I'm sure, you know, it's all really exciting stuff. But if you don't start from the kind of customer end of it, um, then you are. Um, you know, you're gonna you're gonna end up with something that is is incoherent. And you've got to think what people need. And I I um uh, I love that philosophy. Uh, yeah. And I think that um, if I look at my career, I think that the, the the good that I can bring is I do. You know, I'm fascinated by technology. Um, uh, my engineering background is kind of suggests that. Mm-hmm. But what I want to be is focused on making change that works and making change that works means thinking what do, what do people need um, what does the economy need what does the you know society and the environment need and that sounds very grand but when you think about uh, how we use property is fundamental to how successful we are in in life as a society um, then you know being more informed as to what property we've got, what potential it holds, 
and being able to, to use it to best effect, but in a highly efficient way, then you think, well, that's an amazing opportunity. We've got to be really focused because there's almost no end to the things we could do. We've got to be really focused and, and you know, just do things that would really add the most value. But there's a great potential in doing that by bringing digital technology and digital processing to bear on that. So there's kind of um, uh, need and opportun technological opportunity meeting and that's kind of the yin and yang of my career was an engineer now you know now a lawyer now working at my stream hopefully that that um enables it all to come together well for an improvised answer where you didn't know what you were going to say that was that was absolutely very good so no i would i would agree i've seen that up close mike that's exactly the attitude you bring to this and certainly the idea of focus and making a difference is something that i think everyone who's listening will, will respond very well to. So with that, I think uh, it just remains for me to uh, bring the session to a close. So thanks very much for joining, giving us you. your experience. And uh, well, we will follow the work of Land Registry and be there to support in any way we can, both uh, your, your institution and the, the sector more broadly. So thank you very much. Thank you.